Hi, this is Steve Wagner, and this is a brief discussion of trait theories of leadership, and we're going to focus on recent meta-analytic evidence. So, studies that have synthesized a larger body of research and described the trends that we find in that research. So what do we mean by the trait theories? Well, these are, are an evolution of the older great man theories. And uh, I did mean to say great man because these are older theories where the idea was that men were uh, leaders exclusively and that certain men were born leaders, that they had certain characteristics that made them leaders and that they would be leaders whether they were born in the 15th century or the 16th century or the 17th century or the 21st century. The idea is that they had great characteristics that made them natural born leaders. So there's some research suggesting that uh, taller people are more likely to emerge as leaders. And, or we could look at body mass index. Uh, some research would indicate that uh, fit people are more likely to emerge as leaders. That's not going to be our focus here. We're going to be focusing on psychological traits. So personality and cognitive ability. And we're going to look at how those psychological traits are related to different aspects of leadership, leadership emergence leadership effectiveness and leadership behaviors in particular will focus on the full range model of leadership behaviors that include transformational, transactional, and passive or laissez-faire leadership behaviors. So what do we mean by personality? Well personality is the characteristic pattern of thinking, feeling, or behaving that, uh, that basically characterizes a person. And there are different models of personality, but the five-factor model is probably the most commonly observed model and, and probably has the best uh, support from the research in terms of being an organizing framework for personality. As it is labeled, it consists of five factors. They are arranged here conveniently in the acronym OCEAN, O-C-E-A-N. The O is openness to experience, and you can see the facets or the more specific areas that make up openness to experience. It basically is having a, a flexible mind, having a willingness to expose yourself to new ideas, a, a curiosity for new ideas. The C stands for conscientiousness. This is a tendency to be orderly and to be uh, achievement oriented and to be self-disciplined and deliberate in your actions. The E is extroversion. These are the talkative people, those people who are assertive, who are sociable, who exhibit very kind of positive emotions in, in terms of being motivated and outgoing. The A is agreeableness. These are the kind people. They trust in others. They're sincere. They have sympathy for others. They uh, act in uh, altruistic ways. And the N is for neuroticism. This are, these are people who have a high level of anxiety, uh, who exhibit angry hostility, moodiness, who are sensitive to stress. So how is personality related to leadership? Here we see the, the first of many results of meta-analyses that we're looking at here. And you'll see the name Judge repeatedly in here. This is Timothy Judge. And he and his colleagues in the early 2000s did a series of meta-analyses looking at these different trait theories. This looking at personality and leadership, both in terms of emergence of leaders, whether others recognize a person and attribute leadership to them. And the other criterion here is effectiveness. Was an individual a successful leader? So 
we can see here that all of these traits with the exception of agreeableness are associated with leadership emergence and we see that openness and conscientiousness and extroversion are all positively related so as these traits increase the likelihood of emerging as a leader also increases um, neuroticism is negatively related to leadership emergence as you might expect so the greater level of neuroticism exhibit exhibited by an individual the less likely it is that they would be identified as a leader by their peers so it's interesting here that we see a little different pattern in terms of effectiveness while agreeableness did not predict whether a person emerged as a leader they could be agreeable or not it didn't uh, have any predictive quality in terms of uh, a person's emergence as a leader but it does a predict a person's effectiveness as a leader and those characteristics of conscientiousness and extroversion while still predictive aren't quite as predictive as they were when people are just identifying a person as emerging as a leader so all of these five factors are in, are important in terms of predicting leadership none of these are really large correlations but in totality they certainly are a substantial uh, predictive set of variables for for understanding what traits predict leadership what's great about a meta-analysis and this comes from the same meta-analysis is that we can look at how results differ in in various contexts that research has taken place in and so what uh, judge and his colleagues did was look at studies that were conducted in business settings and compared those to those that were conducted in military settings and those that were conducted in settings with students uh, typically universities if you look overall here what you you see is the big story is that context matters in terms of what predicts what personality characteristics predict leadership so openness predicts leadership fairly well in in business and in university settings but not in the military and agreeableness uh, is not predictive in either business or in the military but more so with students the you know the, the best predictors of leadership in the business setting are extroversion and openness in the military setting it's neuroticism the negative correlation that's that's shining through there and in terms of students we see that they're all fairly predictive but that extroversion there is the the strongest predictor of of leadership in that setting we can also look at how personality is related to leadership behaviors in particular uh, we can look at the full range model of leadership and we can see judge again with his colleague Joyce Bono did this meta-analysis and here we see again the five-factor model and these are the correlations of the five-factor model with the uh, transformational leadership behaviors charisma is a combination of the idealized influence and the inspirational motivation factors of the full range model of of leadership the transformational leadership characteristics and we see there that that is the aspect of transformation leadership behavior that is most predicted by personality that everything but conscientiousness has a correlation that would be considered significant in in these cases uh, and and basically in the patterns that we pr would predict none of these are strong correlations but again if we took them in totality and combined their predictive power it uh, personality is predicting charisma in terms of intellectual stimulation and individualized consideration we see that the the most powerful predictor there is extroversion and the other characteristics are, are much smaller in terms of their correlation with these transformational behaviors now when we look at 
the, the transactional behaviors and the passive behaviors. Uh, we see, again, even smaller correlations with personality. So uh, personality tends to be more predictive of transformational leadership behaviors than the transactional and the passive leadership behaviors. Uh, the contingent reward, the best predictor of that is agreeableness. And, and again, uh, while the transactional behaviors are not as effective as the transformational, sometimes they are necessary. Sometimes it's necessary to recognize good performance and, and to reward that performance. And sometimes we need to manage poor performance. And that's uh, what active management by exception is also. So we see that uh, agreeableness is the most predictive of, of those things. Although in terms of active management by exception, it's actually a negative correlation. So the more agreeable person is, the less likely that they're going to use that style. The passive style, again, we see that it it is predicted by conscientiousness and agreeableness here. Agreeableness coming through. The more agreeable a person is, the less likely they are to be passive. The more conscientious a person is, the less likely they are to be passive. So conscientiousness, agreeableness in two good traits because we there really aren't many circumstances where it's good that a leader is passive in their style. So let's switch over and look at the other psychological trait that's most often examined, and that's cognitive ability. When we talk about cognitive ability, we can talk about general intelligence, a person's mental ability, problem solving, verbal ability, reasoning, memory, quantitative reasoning is also usually measured in terms of cognitive ability. And when we look at how cognitive ability is measured in research, typically it's done with some objective paper and pencil test that presents a series of problems that have some defined solution and see how a person scores on that. It's interesting though, there, in terms of the leadership literature in particular, we do see that sometimes researchers measure perceptions of intelligence, not based off an objective measure, but just saying to people, do you, do you believe this leader is intelligent? And so uh, that true when we look at things like leadership emergence could be an important factor. And indeed, we see that it is that uh, the perceived intelligence of a person is strongly, very strongly related to leader emergence. Uh, what's I think even more interesting is if we look at the objective intelligence of an individual, its predictive power in terms of leader emergence is much smaller. And so it makes you question what's happening there. Are, are people good judges of intelligence in their leaders? Because it doesn't seem like uh, the objective intelligence tests are, are predicting leader emergence as well as a person's perceived intelligence. Um, when we look at effectiveness, um, we don't have correlations for perceived intelligence, but in terms of objective intelligence, we see that the objective effectiveness, and this is typically measured where uh, our goals met by the group and the, the leader of the group, versus perceived effectiveness is usually some kind of subordinate or supervisor rating of leadership in groups. And we see that those paper and pencil objective tests are fairly well predictive of the objective effectiveness of leaders. Again, uh, we should cite Judge here in terms of him leading this group doing these great meta-analyses on leadership. Uh, and I would encourage you to go out and read the original articles here. I have the references here for you. There's so much more information than I can present in this short presentation. Thanks for your time.